Hello there. Hello. How's everybody doing tonight? Welcome to an well, actual everybody's doing good. An actual right? Wednesday an actual night. Wednesday night, <laughs> yes. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> Some plans had to change, so we weren't able to go to our tour club that we usually go to on Wednesday nights now. We usually are up there on at First Baptist Church having tour club. But uh, they're doing BBS this week, and so instead we are home doing our yeah. regular thing so and ready to go. Neat. Yeah, yeah we've been talking a lot about discipleship lately. We have, we have, and that's a very huge topic. I don't, I don't know if most people realize how big of a topic that is in Scripture, and we're going to continue that topic today. And we're going to talk about the tabernacle, the temples, the future temple, and the people of God as the temple. Mm -hmm. Now, um, that's a lot. <laughs> yes, so we'll have an intermission at 10 o'clock, and a 30-minute intermission will come back and then go on until 1. So I hope you're ready for all of that. Oh, yeah. Yes, so we're gonna we're gonna dive in. We're gonna kind of review some things. Okay, so we're gonna start with tabernacle, right? Mm -hmm. Moses went up on the mountain, got the instructions for the tabernacle, was, saw the blueprints, saw, saw the, blueprints, the pattern, right, and was saw told the, to build everything according to the pattern. Heavenly tabernacle and build it according to the pattern. And Moses did that. Yes, he did. He did everything that God told him to do, mm -hmm. right? So did the people. So did the people. They built the tabernacle. And so the tabernacle and the presence of God was n not on the mountain anymore. It was where? It was now filling the tent of meeting. Filling the tent of meeting. Filling the tabernacle. The Mishkan, as it's also called. Yes. And so God's presence was literally in the midst, in the middle of the people. And you can see that especially when you read through, like last week's Torah portion was in the book of Numbers, Numbers 1 through 4. Mm -hmm. And the, they were given instructions even on how to set up the camp, on which tribes were on which side, north, south, east, and west. Right. But everything focused in on the, the center of the camp, which was the tabernacle. The tabernacle was always the center of the camp. And the tabernacle was even the center of the column as they were marching along and moving to a new location. Uh, tribes went in front, tribes went in back, but the tabernacle was at the heart right. of the column. Yes, and so e that's, that's why if someone was unclean from a dead body or from Zerat, leprosy, they were told to put them outside the camp, mm -hmm. right? Because that uncleanness wasn't to, supposed to be that close to God. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? And even the Levites were put right around the tabernacle. Right around it. They're the guards around the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the tabernacle with God in the midst of the people. Okay, and there we're not going to talk about the different elements necessarily, although we know that there was the Ark of the Covenant, mm -hmm. the golden altar of incense, the, the lampstand, the, lamp the, show bread. the table where the showbread was. And then outside was the laver and the bronze, bronze altar, altar where they offered the sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all of the sacrifices weren't to save them, right? You made a good None point of this them today. Were. You made None a good point of this today. None of the today. sacrifices were to save them. Thank right. you. I appreciate it. And uh, instead, it wasn't so much that the, the sacrifices were not to save them, but to maintain or keep or restore that right relationship with God that holiness, so they could approach God at all. Yeah, and maintain their purity before God, mm -hmm. right? Because when someone had touched a dead body, there was a time period, and then they had to be brought back from the camp, and then they had to bring a sin offering for the purpose of becoming pure, mm -hmm. right, from that dead body. And so, and I, I want to, I want to, I, I can't stress this enough. Death is the result of sin. Mm -hmm. There was no death at all before sin, which is another reason evolution does not work. Mm -hmm. Okay? Death is a result of sin. So that is why death is seen to be so unclean. 
because it is the ultimate, the ultimate sign of sin and result of sin. Mm -hmm. And so that was never meant to be in the camp. That was never meant to be in the garden. Death is not in the garden, right? And which, so, is, which is why it doesn't work with evolution in the sense because right. death is the key factor and mechanism for the whole theory to work at all. Yes, it is. Death has to be the primary focus and mechanism of everything. Survival of the fittest requires death. Yes. So. Extinction of whole species, right? Even from asteroids or whatever, that requires death. Okay. Death does not occur until sin is present. So, any, anything unclean like that has to be outside the camp. What's inside the camp must be pure, must be holy. And God holds them to that standard as long as they're in that camp formation. Mm -hmm. Right? All right, let's move on to the temple. Once they, once they have the temple... Even once, actually, they set up the Mishkan, the tabernacle in, in Shiloh, um, they have the pilgrimage feast. And so they only go three times a year, mm -hmm. right? So it's only three times a year that you literally have the temple, the tabernacle or the temple in the midst of the people in that sense, with all the people around the temple, around the presence of God, there to offer sacrifices, to go before the Lord in worship, to go before the Lord in prayer as a community, and to maintain their purity as a people. Mm -hmm. They would all go through a mikvah before yes. they got, as they got there to Jerusalem. They would go early to make sure they could do that. Okay. Now, why was the temple destroyed? Oh boy, why was the temple destroyed? Because they had lost that sense of purity, because they were worshiping other gods, because, I mean, there's so many other things that they were not doing. The holiness was not being maintained. So, when the temple was destroyed, was God still there? His presence had withdrawn. He yes. Existed. Ezekiel gives a picture of that. Remember, yes, what, what does Ezekiel say about his departure? Well, it's his glory mm -hmm. ascends and and, and goes, goes in what direction? Towards the east. I Toward believe. the east, the Mount of Olives, and then goes up. Mm -hmm. Right. That sounds familiar. That didn't sounds didn't very familiar. didn't Jesus do something like that? I believe he did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I believe he did. Sounds very familiar. But that was how the presence of God departed before the destruction of the temple. Okay, so if the presence of God's not there, there's no reason for a temple. Mm -hmm. Right? Because again, the Mishkan was the presence of God in the middle of the people. The temple was meant to be the place where the people would gather around the presence of God and God's glory at their festival feast. At the city that he has designated. Their pilgrimage feast, yes. And the place where he has chosen to make his name dwell. His name. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the first temple. Mm -hmm. Then they come back from exile and they build the second temple. Mm -hmm. Now, it never explicitly states that God's presence indwells that second temple. We, we see that stated about um, the first temple in Kings and Chronicles. Mm -hmm. When Solomon dedicated the temple, the presence of God filled the temple. But we don't see that stated about the second temple. Right. Okay. So, to our knowledge, there was never that infilling of the second temple with the glory and presence of God to our knowledge. One can assume that th something to that effect took place um, because everything was, was supposed to be holy and pure, right? Mm -hmm. and, they were operating yeah, as a consecrated as temple. Was, yeah. They were operating as if that was the case. 
We do know that Yeshua entered that temple. Mm -hmm. And Yeshua departed that temple. And Yeshua went up. Like we just said, <coughs> that sounded familiar. Mm -hmm. Right? So the glory did enter that second and temple. It sure did. It entered the first time when he was how many? Eight days old. Yes. And was going in there for his circumcision. We yeah. can say that for certain. For certain, yeah. We're, we're not saying that 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 didn't happen because that absolutely did happen. What we're saying is did the Father through his spirit indwell the temple like he, like he did in the first temple and in the tabernacle. We don't have record of we that. We don't have record of that. So that is the tabernacle, the first temple, and the second temple. Okay. The second temple is destroyed. The, 70 AD. In 70 AD, the Jewish people say it was destroyed because of baseless hatred. Mm -hmm. Baseless hatred. Against who? Against each other. For against one each thing. other. And fellow, ultimately, fellow Jewish people. Yes, and ultimately against who? Those Jewish people who believed Yeshua was the Messiah. And ultimately, Yeshua himself. Okay. So, baseless hatred. That is why the temple was destroyed. Even they say that. So, from 70 AD to till today, there has not been a temple. A physical temple. A physical temple in Jerusalem. But there is a temple. Mm -hmm. We know there's the heavenly temple, right? But scripture speaks of another temple. And this temple has been filled with the Spirit of God. When did that happen? Didn't that happen in Acts chapter 2? I believe it did. Yes, it did. Um, do we want to go to 1 Corinthians or Ephesians first? Well, let's, let's, I'm already at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I think 3. we're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Yes. Go ahead. He says, in speaking about the believer, you know, those who have put their faith and their trust in Yeshua, he says, don't you know that you are God's temple and that the Ruach Elohim, the Spirit of God, dwells among you? And if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. Had they seen the temple destroyed before? Mm -hmm. Was the temple going to be destroyed again? Yes, because this was this Corinthians was written before the fall of the second temple. Yes. So we know that when countries, nations, kingdoms come in and destroy the temple, that kingdom is going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. okay. Which happened to Babylon and which ultimately did happen to Rome. Right. Right. So... Here he's saying, and I don't find it any accident that he's just got, he just got done saying that our works will be revealed by fire. Mm -hmm. Right? In other words, our sacrifices, the things that we offer, the works that we do for the Lord are put on the altar. Mm -hmm. Our sacrifices are put on the altar. Are they good sacrifices or are they bad sacrifices? Will they stand the fire or will they not? And that's how Romans 12 puts it. You know, I urge you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. Mm -hmm. So then he talks about us being the temple and the spirit of God being in us. Mm -hmm. Right? It is the Spirit of God in His people that makes us the temple. Mm -hmm. It was the Spirit of God in the temple and in the Mishkan and the tabernacle that made it the tabernacle and the temple. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, not, it's just a building. It's not the tent. It's not, yeah, it's not the building. It's the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. okay. Is God there? Is God there? All right, now let's go to Ephesians. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 2. And this is some of those passages that we read often at Restoration Fellowship. But uh, <clears throat> he talks about uh, the, the Gentiles in particular, are how they are included in all of this. He talks about the mystery of God. 
and how the mystery of God is the Jew and Gentile coming together. You've just been doing that up a couple of verses for this uh, from this. But um, <clears throat> he says in verse 19, so, so then you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. Well, what is God's house? God's temple. house is the temple. And you are members of God's temple, God's household and his people. He says, you have been built on the foundation made up of the emissaries or the apostles mm -hmm. and prophets mm -hmm. with Messiah Yeshua himself being the cornerstone. It says, in him, the whole building being fitted together is growing. It's hard to think of a, of a building that grows. <laughs> but this, this temple, this building is growing into a holy temple for the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into God's dwelling place in the Ruach. And God's dwelling place among the people has been the tabernacle, has been the temple. Mm -hmm. And it's filled with the Spirit of God. And that's what we as God's people, both Jew and Gentile, mm -hmm. are supposed to be. Yes. So, and Peter talks about us being living stones. Mm -hmm. So if we turn to 1 Peter, keep going right over it. 1 Peter chapter 2, right? Verse okay. 4. Mm -hmm. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men but chosen by God and precious, you also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Messiah Yeshua. So in Messiah, the Spirit fills his people. His people come together. As the community of Messiah, mm -hmm. right? Under the banner of Messiah, we come together. He is the cornerstone. The essential piece. And he builds us up into a holy temple where his spirit dwells. And all of us have a different function within that. Some of us may be pillars, some of us may be stones in the walls, some of us may be hooks, right? <laughs> or something. For the tabernacle for the that screens, holds the curtains and the right? screens. Yeah. All, all of these things. We may have different functions, but we make up one house. Mm -hmm. We make up one temple. That's how he talked about the tabernacle when they were first building mm -hmm. it. You know, they were, they were assembling all of the panels, all of the bases, all of the 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 curtains and, and all of the different hooks and all of those things and so the tabernacle with all of those parts and pieces was echad was mm -hmm. one. one okay and that's what we are and so e even in the well i don't want to get ahead of myself oh so tonight it's you hmm. but i caught myself uh -huh. <laughs> okay so we are the temple of god Right? Because the Spirit dwells in us and we are united with Messiah. That's what makes the temple. Okay? Not a tent, not a building, but the Spirit of God in the midst. Mm -hmm. And it, it's the same thing with a congregation, with a fellowship. Yes. You know, we're just we're just people hanging out. We could be at a football stadium. <laughs> You know, if the Spirit of God is not with us, it's no different right. than us just hanging out somewhere. But if the Spirit of God is with us, then that changes everything. Absolutely everything. Have you ever been in a church where it just felt dead? Mm -hmm. In a congregation that just felt dead? It's sad. And yet when the Spirit is growing that congregation, is teaching that congregation, is moving that congregation, and there is such life there and such joy. Mm -hmm. okay. So now 
there's the idea of the future temple. Okay. Because the physical temple is going to return. Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, the temple will be rebuilt. Yes, it will be consecrated. Yes, it will be on some level at least functioning. And yes, the Antichrist will desecrate it. I'm not talking about that temple right now. Not the temple I'm talking about. There's a whole lot of discussion that's going to have to go on about whether or not that temple at any time is for the people of God in Yeshua. Mm -hmm. okay. That's another conversation. That's a whole other conversation. Okay. I am talking about the temple that Yeshua will build. When he returns, Ezekiel tells us that there will be a millennial temple. Mm -hmm. That there will be a temple that the Messiah builds. And that the nations stream to. And that the nation, that like they have never done before. Ever. Mm -hmm. This temple is huge. Mm -hmm. How big is this temple? Oh, you had to ask me that. Uh, let's just say it's bigger than the Temple Mount. Yes, it is. This is what, about a square mile? Something like that. Yeah, the platform of it. Yeah. Right? It's huge. Because it's got to take in a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Right? And who is the focal point of that temple? Who is the focal point? Is, is the king. Is the king. Is the Messiah. He will be on the throne, mm -hmm. right? The Spirit of God will fill that temple. That's The Spirit of God is the glory of God. It is the Spirit in the Son, mm -hmm. and it is the Spirit in the people. Of God. Mm -hmm. glorify, at this point in the millennial kingdom, especially the glorified people of God. And even those who, who right? If the spirit is in this place, mm -hmm. the spirit will be in that temple like never before. The glory of God will be in that temple like never before. Mm -hmm. The Mishkan, the tabernacle, and the Solomon's temple were just a foretaste of that temple. Where the body of Messiah, the people of Israel, come and worship God, worship the King, and the Spirit of God is indescribable. Mm -hmm. That is what we're looking forward to. And that is what we are preparing for. Mm -hmm. We are preparing as living stones today mm -hmm. to be living stones in that temple. Mm -hmm. Now, will that temple be a functioning temple with sacrifices? Yes. Yes. Ezekiel, Ezekiel tells us that's the case. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yes, there will be sacrifices. Yes, there will be a functioning Levitical priesthood. But again, the sacrifices were never meant for salvation. The Levit Levitical priesthood is not the priesthood of the Abrahamic covenant. Not the covenant of our redemption. Right. Not the priests of our redemption. Correct. They are the priests of sanctification. They're the, the priests of the Mosaic Covenant, mm -hmm. right? So they will be functioning. The judges will judge with justice and righteousness. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately there's the king. Mm -hmm. I 
don't think we quite grasp the idea that the temple will once again be in play mm -hmm. and that the manifest presence of God will be in the midst of his people again. Mm -hmm. Like never before. And Yeshua, the king, is going to be preparing us for something else to come. Because ultimately, what are we waiting for? We're waiting for Revelation 21 and 22, mm -hmm. right? We're waiting for, Revelation 21 talks about what? When the city, the, the New, New Jerusalem. Jerusalem, comes down. Where there is no temple. Why? Because God the Father, our Heavenly Father, God Himself, will be with the people. And we will see Him face to face. Mm -hmm. There will be no more sin at that point. There will be no more death at that point. And yet Yeshua, the Lamb, and the Father are on the throne. And the foundation of that temple, or so to speak, the foundation of the city is what? <clears throat> the stones that are named after, after the apostles. After the apostles. What did we read in Ephesians? We are living stones. Well, um, the foundation. Built upon the foundation, foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Right. And so the gates of that city are named after? The tribes. The tribes. So we'll, they'll, that'll resemble, remember, the tribes around the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. The whole city, in essence, is the temple. There's no just one type of temple that we see and will see again in the millennium. The whole city is filled with the people of God in a, you talked about glorified state, but everyone at that point will Everybody. be in a glorified state. Mm -hmm. And we will be with our God. We will be his people and he will be our God. There will be no more sins. He will put our sins as far as from him as the east is from the west, right? Mm -hmm. I can't hardly imagine that. It's definitely outside of our experience. Yes. But, yes, it is. So let me ask a, a question. What Sorry. does this have to do with discipleship? Well, discipleship, a disciple is a... Is a learner, a student. Learner, as a student. Student unto what What purpose? The, no, if we know what we are going to be, if we know what our end state is supposed to be, right. then we know uh, the steps that we need to take in order to get there. Right. You know, if, if we know we have a math test on Friday, then I'm not going to study English. Correct. I'm going to study math. Right. What a concept. Those of you who actually were decent <laughs> students anyway, um, if you know what the test is on, the subject, then that's what you're going to study and that's how you're going to prepare. If we know that our goal is to be that living stone, to be a part of that, that, uh, that holy temple unto the Lord, then we know our purpose, we know our direction, we know how we should be preparing ourselves in the meantime in order to get to that state where we are ready to fulfill the function and the role that he has for us. That's why 1 Peter chapter 2 starts off by saying, um, <clears throat> So get rid of all malice and all deceit and, and hypocrisy and envy and all lashan hara, which is the evil speech or the evil tongue. Uh, as newborn babes long for pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow toward salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, and as you come to him, a living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also like living stones. Yes. So, I mean, there are things 
discipleship, we are to be made more and more like him, aren't we? Well, it's, it's kind of like now we are still in grammar school and high school. We're still there, or, right? We haven't graduated to college yet. That's kind of like the resurrection, mm -hmm. right? Graduation, go to the resurrection and God, it's the real deal. Well, the millennial is the real deal. Maybe another right. way to look at it as opposed to being that... Uh, I wasn't this, done with my illustration. Well, thank you. <laughs> finish, your, finish your illustration. I have a better one. I'm looking forward to hearing it. And then, of course, graduation from that is eternity. Mm -hmm. Right? You, you Now you live your life. You take what you've learned and you use it and you live it. And remember, Scripture talks about that all of the promises that God has given are yes in Yeshua. Mm -hmm. In in eternity, there there because there's no more sin at all, because there's no more death at all. There's no more curse. The curse is gone completely, forever gone. Everything is yes in Yeshua. Everything is blessing in Yeshua. The people. Do everything the way he taught us to do it. Mm -hmm. What a day. Okay, now let me hear yours. Now can I? Yeah, can I? So what sound is not supposed to be heard on the temple during its building, during its construction? Oh, tools. There are not supposed to be any iron tools mm -hmm, right? heard on the temple. Right. Because, so that means all of the cutting, all of the shaping, all of that stuff takes place where? Somewhere else. Somewhere else. In the, Away, in the quarry. In the quarry, yeah. So we are, in essence, as living stones, we're still in the quarry. Yeah. We are good. still having pieces and things cut and chipped off and marked off. We are still being shaped to where that when we are brought to the temple, we will fit exactly Perfect. in the place that he has for us. So I like we, we're still. That's good. I told you it was That's good. good. <laughs> so we are still in the quarry. That's where we are right now, and all of those things that don't belong are being worked on, being smoothed out, and being shaped. That's where we are, and that's. I, Do you feel cycle. like you've been sanded lately? <laughs> Chiseled. <laughs> Chiseled. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we have bigger pieces that have to cut off, and that hurts. Yeah. It does. It's not pleasant. But he removes, and just like the pruning of, of a plant, of, of, a, of a vineyard, mm -hmm. he prunes it, not just to be mean, but so that it be, produces actually more fruit. And the, the ones that are fruitful, he prunes those mm -hmm. even more. Mm -hmm. uh, so they will produce even more fruit. So all of these things are about discipleship. All of these things are leading and guiding and directing us to that destination. Uh, of where we fit perfectly in the, the household of God, to fit perfectly in his house. Right. You know, he talks about us, I am preparing a mansion uh, for you, as he talks about in John 14, mm -hmm. or a dwelling place for you. I'm going to prepare a dwelling place for you, and that's wedding language. Yes, it is. Um, but he's also, you know, he's also saying, oh, and by the way, that's where you will be. You know, you're going and to be a part that? of that. In like his one, in his house in his in, the in father's, my father's house, house right in the father's house and again what is the father's house it is the temple okay. yeah mm -hmm. and so as living okay. stones as the temple and the body of Messiah that lasts forever by the time we get to the temple by the time we get to that millennial reign where Jerusalem comes down all of the the chipping and sanding and shaping is, is done. On everyone. On everybody. On everyone. Whether mm -hmm. you went into the millennium with a glorified body or whether you were born during the millennium and lived for Yeshua, lived for God, the chiseling will be done. Mm -hmm. And everyone will fit perfect, right? into place mm -hmm. and there will be no one put outside the camp anymore mm -hmm. because all that will be over we will be holy as he is holy mm -hmm. amen that's the goal of discipleship amen amen that's some good stuff y'all mm -hmm. <laughs>
So we should probably wrap that up. On, yeah. uh, let's end on a high note. Uh, on a good note, yeah. So I don't know if we can say anything bad about that topic though, uh, <laughs> at all. But no. with that, we thank you for joining us. We thank Very you for, so. for how the Father is working in you and in us and in Restoration Fellowship. Uh, we love y'all. We just look forward to seeing all of y'all again this Shabbat. Uh, yeah. One o'clock at First Baptist Morristown is where we are supposed to be. And uh, we hope you would join us for that. So y'all have a good night, okay? Shalom. Shalom. And now it takes about you know 10 to 20 seconds for us to turn these things off.